I can walk or I can ride. <laughs> Gotta love the Tiger Tug. It's the best thing ever. Fits really well with the 505. There's an antenna down below that is totally in the way with most of the dollies that lift it from the cross tubes. Um, but the Tiger Tug fits it perfect. Here comes a helicopter. Turn on the radio. Buddies around. The airlines for the pop-out floats, um, we have to be cognizant of that when we're lifting the Tiger Tug. Okay, we got a steerman on the runway. We got a 44 waiting to cross as well. Okay. Helicopter helicopter base runway one around a little too far. I usually like to um, keep my blades perpendicular to the body of the helicopter. That way I know for sure that I have completely untied the helicopter. Just one of the many habits that helps to keep me out of trouble. Every habit that I've created is because I learned it from someone else's mistake or my mistake and got lucky. Uh, so today's mission, I'm going to go down to the racetrack and pick Mike up. He's doing a, some sort of a car tracking event this weekend. So he's staging his vehicle and his trailer so he can get the cool spot. Someone's practicing auto rotations here. That's cool. I doubt they would do any fall downs. Nope. Power recovery. Nice. All right. So that's the mission. I'm going to do my uh, final walk around and then we'll be on our way. check ride in with the FAA when we just got a single pilot 135 I haven't used it but we have it all right walk around so I realized that my ballast is in a dangerous position if I were to have an accident and it were to shift I'm going to tie it down the best I can here so this is super heavy it's 25 pounds of shot in each one of these bags. This one I have through the straps. These are not going anywhere. If they did, they're malleable and I can push through. I don't really like to have them down here by the pedals, um, but uh, it is, for me, it is a matter of safety to have my CG where I need it to be to fly it comfortably and precisely than it is for the unlikely event of an accident. So I'll turn this off because otherwise I will, it sounds awful in the headset when you use the other radio. I'll have my four flight going, get battery going, make sure there are no TFRs that have popped up get my in reach going. I always like to fly on my person if I were to have to walk out of the desert or out of the Alaska bush or what have you. So we've got survival gear. I'm flying in the desert and I've got a life vest. That's silly, right? But look at this vest. This pocket right here has so much gear in it. So does this pocket. It's all the gear, the essentials I would want to have. Like bug dope, a knife, uh, chapstick, little things that might not think about. 
Okay, so I'm going to configure my weight and balance because last time we flew, we were heavy up front and we moved some of this ballast. She's telling me that the engine is out. I am confirming. So, forward ballast, yes. Aft ballast, no. Now this will give me a good representation. I'll put in, get back to my weight and balance page. No exceedances, that's good. Come down here to weight. It's so much farther forward than the arm of if it were a passenger, so I'm just gonna give it a little extra weight. Um, got a little bit of gear in the back, a little bit of gear in the way back. Got the wheels. So I'm still quite aft CG, 166.9 as my longitudinal station. I prefer to be about 163, 164, that's the sweet spot. So I know I'm gonna be quite tail uh, low and rear skid low. So when I'm setting down, I'll just be prepared that that, that back left skid is gonna to touch way early and I'm gonna to have to fly it forward as I touch down in the front of the skids. Firm weight and balance engine page, get my seatbelt all the way on.